What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial. And today I'll show you how to access the S3 bucket in a different AWS account using an IAM row and the bucket policy. I found this use case very common in the workplace because it's almost inevitable that you have to work with another team and more often than not, they typically use a different AWS account than the ones that you have to host your services. So you have to think of a way to let your services to access the S3 bucket. In this video, I'm going to use a Lambda function for the demo, but this approach works for all other services as well. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so right now I'm logged into two different AWS accounts and have them side by side on my screen. One is AWS one, the other is AWS two. Just to mimic what I showed you before in the architecture diagram that we have AWS one and AWS two. And what we're going to do in this tutorial is that we're going to create an IAM row in account number one, and then create a Lambda function and attach the IAM row to it. And then we're going to move on to account number two and then create S3 bucket, and then modify the bucket policy to allow the other lambdas to access it. So now let's go back to the console. So in account number one, what I would do is click on services and then scroll down to the security section Click on IAM row, click on rows, create a row, and then we're going to select Lambda because we're going to attach that to a Lambda function. And then we're going to create a policy, hit JSON. I already have this written down before, so I'm going to copy and paste it here but I'll include that in the link down below so you have it as well. So paste. And then you have to change this to your S3 bucket. And this is what we're gonna create in the next step. We are just gonna call it Jinmeister cross account bucket. And then hit next. You can add tag if you want to, and then hit next. And then give it a name. I would just call it cross account S3 cross account policy. and then hit create policy. Right, so that is successful. And now go back to the IAM row, hit refresh. Oh, it brings us back, but no worries. Just do this again. Click Lambda and then hit next here. and then search the policy that we just created. I believe we call it this one, select it. And then hit next, add tag, hit next, give it a name. I would just call it S3 cross account row in AWS one. Hit create. All right, so it's done. And now we are ready to create a Lambda function. So I just hit service, hit Lambda. All right, I'm just gonna maximize this. Create function. And then for the name, I just do S3 cross account demo. We're gonna choose note and then click here to select the IAM row that we just created. I believe it's this. And then hit create function. All right, so it's successful. And right now let's go to account number two and create our S3 bucket. So in account number two, I'll hit service and then select S3. I'm gonna maximize this. 
and then hit create bucket and then for the bucket name remember when we created the IAM policy we said that we're going to name it to be let's go back to account number one click here we said we're going to name it this so I'm just going to copy this go back to account number two paste it here and then enable bucket versioning enable server-side encryption and then create bucket all right so it's done now let's click on this bucket and then go to permissions scroll down to bucket policy we can hit edit and then we're going to enter the bucket policy to allow the item road to access it i have this written down so i'm just going to copy and paste it but i include a link down below to include this as well so there are two things that you have to change here one is the on for the IAM road that you just created and then two is that you have to change this to be your to be your own s2 bucket so now let me go back to account number one and get the IAM road on so under IAM I hit rows I believe this is the one that we just created it and then copy this go back to account number two paste it here and then right here I just copy this and paste it here so what this policy does is that it allows the IAM row that we just created to get object from our bucket to put object from our bucket and then give permission to the bucket owner so let's hit save and that is it and right now let's go back to account number one to the lambda function and try to access it and see if we have permission so if i hit index i remove all this and first thing first i'm going to import the aws library so i'm going to do const aws equal to require aws sdk and then aws that config that update region and we're gonna set it to us east one because that's where our lambda is hosted and then we're gonna define s3 as new aws dot s3 and then inside the handler we're just gonna define file content equal to something like hello this is testing and then we're going to define the params there's an object bucket and then we're going to look for the bucket name in account number two And then the key, which is the path inside the bucket, let's call it data test.txt. And then the ACL. I'll just give the bucket owner full permission. And then the body is the file content content encoding utf8 should be fine and now we're going to call it so aws s3 dot put object promise that then I just lock it if we get an error I just lock it out as well
So what this does is that it just puts a file with this file content to this S3 bucket and give the owner full permission to control it. And now let's test it out. Hit deploy. Let's look at our S3 bucket to make sure that there's nothing there first. If we hit object in the account number two, there's nothing here. And if we go back to account number one to test, just test it then. We don't need all that. Create and then hit test. All right, so it's successful. Now let's go back to account number two and then hit refresh. We should see a file here. All right, we see data folder inside here. It's a test file. Let me download that and see if we have the same content that we specified. I just hit save. And then open that. And that's exactly what we specify as the content. And that is it everyone. I hope you have learned something. If you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.